What's July 1st going to look like for you this year? If you've been online recently, you may have seen the hashtag cancel Canada Day floating around. Supporters are saying that in light of the recent hate-motivated attacks on a London family uh, and the discovery of the bodies of so many Indigenous children in Kamloops, Canada Day this year, they say, should be a day of reflection and mourning and not a day of celebration. Um, Candy, kick this off for us. What is your take on this and how will it look like for you this year? Yeah, I have some mixed feelings on this topic and I wanna first you know, show full respect to my brothers and sisters in the I Don't Know More movement and I'm not trying to disrespect that. I'm just not ready to cancel Canada Day altogether for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think it's going to endear the rest of the country to us if we ask people to not celebrate their nation. The other thing is, the First Nations people in my family have been in uniform serving this country for years. I have a nephew, James, who still serves. He's done three tours overseas, lost hearing from one of those tours. Um, so the celebration of Canada as a country is important to me. I think it's still a fantastic country if you look around the world and see what some of the alternatives are, even downstairs to the United States and, and to the South. Uh, indigenous people down there are certainly, you know, faring far worse than we are. However, there was a thing that happens in Nova Scotia, in Mi'kmaq called Treaty Day every October 1st, where we come together with the government and we reaffirm our peace and friendship treaties. So we say we want to live together in peace and friendship. I would like Canada Day this year to look like that. I look at this as a marriage. I've thought about divorce. I don't think we can divorce, guys. I think we have to stay in this for the kids. So if we're going to stay in it for the kids, <laughs> then we both have to come to the table wanting, wanting to make this work. And I hope that Canada Day this year Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians will come together and say we're serious about this marriage and we want this to work. Mm -hmm. Man, Candy, I hope a lot of people are hearing that attitude and that perspective and, you know, using that as inspiration because I can definitely and have already seen reaction to Cancel Canada Day from people who wanted to aggressively uh, celebrate it and uh, push aside or at least uh, downplay uh, the recent events that Mel uh, had referenced. And I feel like if they could just hear, you know, the spirit in which you're saying uh, the marriage analogy and staying together for the sake of the kids, I, I feel like so many of us on so, um, so many issues could be, would be much farther along. I wanted to call out one of those uh, Twitter remarks or social media remarks that just crossed the screen. Someone said, I will not wear red, I will wear orange, which I never thought about. It's kind of interesting uh, uh, to, to wear orange on that day instead of red. I, I think that there is a lot to reflect on. And what I am reflecting on is the fact that we can even do this in Canada. We can even raise the suggestion of not celebrating Canada Day. Mm. That in and of itself, dissent is a democratic right. Um, there is a freedom to be able to actually call out your country, criticize your country, say, uh, my country has embarrassed me, my country should do better, uh, that many citizens in other countries can't do. Um, and so for a lot of immigrants to this country, they left places where those freedoms were not possible, those opportunities were not possible. Um, I am of Chinese descent. My parents are from Hong Kong. I don't want to get into too much about the Chinese government, but there is censor censorship there. There is not a lot of dissent, at least public dissent. You can't go and trend a hashtag on Weibo saying, cancel China Patriotic Day. And if you did, it wouldn't, uh, you know, trolls coming at you and people giving you a thumbs down would be the least of your problems um, mm -hmm. in some areas of the world. So I think that also it's an opportunity for us to consider the fact that we're even having this conversation <coughs> is in and itself a luxury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I think what's interesting from that, if I take it one step further, because I love what you're saying, Lainey, is, is that's why a lot of our parents are here. They left their countries for the land of opportunity, which to them was Canada. And for many parents, mine certainly, they have been very thankful for the life that this country has afforded them. But the flip side of democracy is not only the ability to be able to have something like freedom of speech and not, you know, be kidnapped and then go who knows where. But I think 
democracy more and more, as we've seen in light of events in the States and certainly here, democracy is also something that requires action, an active role in upholding and keeping that democracy safe. And that action part for me this Canada Day is where I'm really focusing. I'm like maybe a lot of Canadians where my heart is broken. The Indigenous children of which the communities have known about forever, uh, it is shocking to people who have not been on top of their history. Um, the family that was killed in London, Ontario, it's all shocking. But then you get stuck, at least I have, in saying, I feel awful, but now what can I do? So it's the verb now for me that I don't think I'm going to be celebrating Canada Day in its typical sense, but I want to learn more and I want to most especially do more. So if every Canadian this Canada Day and beyond actually said to themselves, like, what's one thing that I can do to improve life on Turtle Island for Indigenous people? Like, I don't know. That's one thing that I'm asking myself. So mm. it's the action part now that I think a lot of people like me who are very well intentioned need uh, to figure out. Mm. I think that's a really good point. I think everyone who's probably watching is struggling with mixed feelings. There has been a lot of reason for lots of shame and sadness, um, especially lately, as Duval pointed out. I'm going to say, though, that when it comes to Canada Day, like I don't think I've ever really... It's not that I've never reflected on a sort of sense of pride, but I've never been one of those people that I associate with sort of the stereotype of, of Canada Day celebrations, which like might involve like painting your face or putting a, you know, a maple leaf on your uh, face and like, you know, staying up really late. I mean, I'm in bed usually by the time fireworks go off. And I don't think that I've often spent that time. I associate it a little bit with the sort of stereotypes that I actually feel like don't really reflect my experience as a Canadian. And I'm thinking of the obvious ones that in order to have national pride. You have to love hockey. You have to love a certain kind of donut and coffee place. You have to love the tragically hip and you have to love beer, right? I, obviously I'm generalizing <laughs> and stereotypes, but these are a lot of the ways that commercials are, uh, you know, shown uh, with those kinds of imagery. It is, it is definitely a kind of imagery <clears throat> that I don't associate with. I mean, I like beer, but I feel like, uh, uh, like, so I want to distance myself from that. I do want to do a bit more reflecting, but I do think the idea of canceling may not stir empathy in the people who maybe need it the most. I think it will, it, you know, Candy, to your point, it might inspire anger and maybe more divisiveness as opposed to what we should really be focusing on, which is coming together.